Welcome to Multi-Object Analysis with ImageJ. Photo credit goes to Queen Anne's Revenge Project. Okay, so you've got ImageJ. Go ahead and open up your image here. We've got our picture of nails. And the first thing we're going to do is calibrate the image. You, you see we've got one inch down here. So we're going to make sure that ImageJ recognizes that that number of pixels is one inch, and that will help for our analysis later. Now we change it to 8-bit, and we're going to do auto threshold to give us that black and white, that contrast. So once we've done that, we go ahead and we're going to dilate the image, and that's going to help us close off gaps. We're going to grab the paint tool and get rid of the extraneous data here like the little dots. And then once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to feel, fill in the white spaces within the objects. And then we're going to erode it back to where it was. So now we've got a lot of nice black objects for us to work with, but you can see that some of them are connected and that's going to skew our results. Since we're not particularly interested in area, uh, we're not going to worry too much about skewing the data. I specifically wanted to show you what to do when you have this challenge here. So we're going to go through and make sure that None of these nails are touching. I set the brush to three pixels to ensure that none of these objects would be too close together, that they would be amalgamated by the uh, object analysis, the particle analysis. And it looks like we were almost successful. You see how the number is in the middle of those two nails? That image J thinks that's all one object. So I'm just going to go back and make sure to separate those. And then click on Analyze, Particle Analysis, and here we go. We've got our nails counted. And we've got a total of 69. You can see each object has been numbered by image J so that we can make sure that uh, we have as many objects in the image as we think we should. This is important so that we can check our data. When somebody goes through in the lab and just counts all the nails, we have to assume that they got it right. One of the beautiful things about this computer-assisted morphometric analysis is that we have redundancy. We've got this image. If we save it, somebody can go back and double-check and make sure, hey, yes, there were 69 objects in that image. So now let's check here. Uh, we've got the ferret number, which measures the greatest distance between two objects. And so I'm just going to double check here with my measuring tool because not all of the objects are vertical, right? Some of them are kind of at the slant. So we're going to take 26. And you can see that it measures close to what the ferret number for 26 is. And that's because I am, uh, when I measure it, I'm doing a subjective measurement. It's what I think the length should be, whereas image J is going to take the maximum distance between any two points, okay? That's another beautiful thing about the, these morphometrics are that they are objective. Okay, so now we have our da data, and we've plopped that into Excel. Again, we're going to focus on the ferret value, the maximum distance between any two pixels within an object. And 
You can see under the NRMSTD column, the O column there, the equation that I'm using to have Excel get my normal distribution and my standard deviation. And then I'm just applying that down the column. And we're going to use O and F columns. So my ferret data, which would roughly equate to my length and my normalized data. And so we're having Excel create the normal distribution for us. And you can see this beautiful bell cr curve created by our data. And the standard deviation here is telling us that most of the data, is, or most of the nails, are going to be, be a little over 1.5 inches and a little under 2.5 inches, according to this data. And that most of those there are going to be up at the, the peak there. And that's exactly what you would expect to find with this normal distrib distribution. This allows us to make some inferences about the building practices and even a little bit about the building materials that are being used at the site. For one, we know that these nails are probably not being used to join together great big logs, right? If typically our nails are just over two inches long, that means that we're getting a lot of boards, standardized boards, being put together, something that a two inch nail would be able to join. And this is exactly what you would expect to find at the site of a shipwreck, right? If you're not familiar with the normal distribution, there are some great videos out there. I highly recommend Khan Academy. Let us review what we've gone over. ImageJ allows us to analyze multiple images. It will create data for us that we can then export to Excel and create graphs. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.